A huge thank you to all the super sponsors who make it possible for me to make these videos. Visit David X Newton on Patreon to join the ASCII Brigade. The stations of the Ramp 2024 hub are populating rapidly now, but having actually done some preparation this time, I'm free to put together some tutorials for the newer mappers among them. Here's how to do things if you want to use textures beyond what Doom 2 provides. Originally, Doom 2 separates its surface graphics into two categories. There are textures, which are the ones that can be displayed on the walls, and flats, which are displayed on floors and ceilings. It had to do this because the DOS version needed to store the flat and texture graphics in different ways for efficiency. In modern map formats, the line between them has been erased and you can use either a flat or a texture anywhere, but you'll still see them stored separately in WAS that are made to be compatible with more vanilla type ports. The easiest way to expand your palette of textures and flats for RAMP is to take the resources provided with the starter pack and load them into your editor alongside your base iWOD. The RAMP starter pack contains a PK3 file that has graphics from two popular collections in the community, the 32 in 24 texture pack and Ukiro's Otex collection. You can set this up to load alongside your map in Ultimate Doom Builder by specifying it as a resource either in your base game configuration or when you load your map. This will severely multiply the length of the normal textures and flats lists and give you a huge palette to work with. UDB will also automatically load the resource alongside your WOD in the game when you click the test button. Normally, if you were using graphics from a package that wasn't part of your own WOD like this, you would have to go through the process of copying those graphics over into your own WOD so that GZ Doom could find them there. But for these two texture packs you don't need to do that because 32 in 24 and OTEX are already included in RAMP when the project has compiled together. So this is the quick and easy way to get a lot more options for your texturing. However, let's say you were using one of the other texture packs that the community has put together such as the equally amazing Jimmy Tex by James Paddock. I've loaded it as a resource in UDB here, and in this tiny example map I've got my eye on the nice looking H-flat stone textures and a couple of the brick walls. If we set these up in our own WOD, then remove Jimmy Tex from the list of resources, the textures aren't found and we get these placeholders. And RAMP doesn't make up the difference here, it doesn't have these textures either. In this case you'll need to know how to open up your WOD in Slade and copy the textures you've used across. As a first step, before touching anything in Slade, close down your Doom Map Editor if you're using a separate one. Because accidentally saving changes from one program on top of the other is a very real problem even for experienced Doom Mappers. Once it's safe, open up your WOD in Slade, along with the WOD that you want to get your resources from. We'll deal with flats first. Doom Engine games know how to interpret data lumps by looking for markers like the Map01 marker that defines the start of our map data, and this time the lump we're looking for in our resource wad is called FF Start. Underneath that you'll find all the graphics for flats under the same names as they appear in the Doom editor, and you can copy and paste them across to your wad in the normal way. Add an FF Start marker of your own before the flats in your wad begin, and an F End marker afterwards, this time with just one F. For various technical reasons these are the pair of markers that will be recognised by the greatest number of source ports, but GZ Doom is quite forgiving with their names and whether you use a double F or not. After they're all in place, save the wad and try starting it up again, and you'll see we've got the flats now. So let's do the same for the textures. There are actually two different approaches Doom games have for dealing with textures. The first is simply storing graphics in the WOD to be treated directly as textures. This is a modern source port invention and you can set these up by importing your graphics between TX Start and TX End markers. These are some textures from one of my old projects that I've just copied in off my hard drive. If you load up your WOD again in UDB after adding those, you'll see them become available in the texture browser. The second way of dealing with textures, which is the way Doom originally did things, is that the WOD stores a list of patches which are graphics that act like pieces of a jigsaw that are used to build textures. A lump called Texture 1 or Texture 2 is then used to define arrangements of patches which make up the actual textures you see in the editor in the game. This allows for a lot of flexibility, saving space by not making you need entire separate graphics if you want to define a variant of a wall with ornamentation or a switch or something. You'll generally see patches in a WOD between the P start and P end markers. To get the list of actual textures, click on the T icon at the top of the Slade window, which will bring you to the texture browser and editor. This is a visual representation of the data that makes up the textures one lump, describing the patches and their positions to make up each texture. Sometimes, and actually always in Jimmy Tex, each texture is only made up of one patch with an identical name to the texture, but Vanilla Doom requires both the patch and the texture to be present in order to use it. 
From here, you can find the names of the textures you used. I recommend that you export them as graphics and then copy those back into your own WOD using the TX Start and TX End markers instead, because having to deal with merging patch lists and texture definitions together is something that's best left behind in the 90s. The same way as we saw before, you should be able to open your map back up again and have the textures available to use as well. Once you can run your WOD independently without missing textures, you can submit it to Rampart, which will pick up on the definition of flats and textures and patches, and store them to be downloaded with the project. Do be wary of clashes with other texture names from other maps. It can be easy to get into these because of texture names still being awkwardly limited to 8 characters. After submitting your WOD, make sure that you compile the project, and any problems will be reported in your map's log. If the patches method interests you though, you can still build your own textures from a library of patches. To do this, click the T icon in a WOD that doesn't already have a textures lump defined, and it'll ask you what format you want your texture definitions to be in. Choose Textures here because it's the one compatible with Rampart, but Slade can automatically convert between them. Then open the Texture Editor by clicking T again, and you can experiment with creating textures out of patches defined in your own WOD or those from your base resources. You're likely to discover why many people prefer to avoid this method, but it can be good for making new variations, and it definitely beats trying to assemble textures before we had the community making modern tools like this. Thanks also to the many other sponsors who are contributing. I really appreciate your sponsorship. If you'd like to join the list, take a look at DavidXNewton on Patreon.